what is the most logical and efficient method to upgrade from one version of .NET to another version of .NET. Hello there, welcome to this channel. In this video, I am going to show you how to upgrade from one version of .NET to another version of .NET in a very easy and efficient way. In this video, I use this project as an example. This is a full stack crowd web application in ASP.NET Core MVC but in .NET 6. We upgrade this from .NET 6 to .NET 8. If you would like to know more about this full stack application, you can watch the video. First thing you should do is create a new branch in case if something goes wrong. So click here, new branch. For example, call it version 1.3. Check out branch and based on main or based on your favorite branch, create. Then go to your project, right click, and then click on properties. As you see here, the target framework is .NET 6. We would like to upgrade to .NET 8. Close the settings. Right click again on your project name. Go to manage NuGet packages. When you change the target framework of your project, you also have to change the version of your dependencies. The version of dependencies has to match the version of the target framework. Click on updates, select it all. As you see here, it also shows from uh, this version of uh, .NET 6 to the latest version of .NET. And all of them are pointing to the version 8, which is uh, for .NET 8. I hope it is clear. And now click on update. Accept it. So let us see what is here. Azure identity, vulnerability. Change it to this version and install. Accept it. Now everything is fine. Because we changed the target framework. Click on run to test it if everything is okay or not. We did not get any error everything is fine there are some syntax changes we will go through each file line by line to see what is new in the new version of c sharp and what is new in the new version of .NET. so in .NET 8 we are using c sharp 12 the .NET is a separate thing and the language that you use is a separate thing when you change from one version of a framework to another version of that framework and from one version of dependencies to another version of dependencies it is not just changing the version there comes a lot of new changes in the syntax and you have to also change those new syntax or bring those new changes in your source code visual studio has the necessary tools by default installed or came with visual studio that helps you to upgrade from one version of any tools that you use to another version line by line in each line you see what is new and what you should do instead of going and reading huge articles 
about uh, the new releases or the new versions. To see what is new in .NET 8, you can go to this link. I will put the link in the description and read this long article. I read this already. Most of this article is about Blazor. There are many new changes in .NET 8 for Blazor, but not so much about Razor pages and stuff that we are using. But it is interesting if you come here and read. It is not necessary because Visual Studio helps you with the new changes in the source code without reading articles. And if you want to know what is new about C Sharp 12 for the new version of C Sharp, you can come to this link. I will put the link in the description as well. So there are not so many changes about C Sharp 12. Here you also can read about uh, C Sharp 11, C Sharp 10, uh, etc. There are some tutorials, demos, uh, and uh, how to C Sharp articles, and much more. Let us go back to Visual Studio. So, the best way to upgrade from one version to another version is to look at your source code line by line. And then you will see what is new and what you should do to bring the changes. For example, let us start from the controller. Customer controller from the top. Here is a small mistake. We don't need this. So you don't need the OR default. So you see suggestions. You see three dots here. And it says new expression can be simplified. These things are all in the new version or the older version as well. Show potential fixes. And it shows you what to do. Click on this. Here you also see when you upgrade to the new version, you see warnings, errors and stuff. The reason we got no error by upgrading from one version to another version is because there are not so many changes between .NET 6 and .NET 8. There are a few syntax changes and most of the changes are in the background. There are many changes about the performance and security, but we don't have to worry about them. So the same thing is about this one. So, so when you see underline with, with this uh, underline green, it, it is uh, just a suggestion that you can do it better. So, so this way you can simply upgrade uh, your application. And about this, here instead of using dot operator, you can just uh, use curly braces and then use it like key value pairs uh, like uh, JavaScript. The same thing about this one. Now here everything is okay. There is no warning, no nothing. In the previous version, it did not look like this. Now it looks like uh, a string template, much nicer and cleaner. So then in the home controller, here it says that everything is okay. Private member home control node can be removed as the value assigned to it is never read. Show potential fixes. 
see in the new version you can do in this way click on it show potential fixes and it simplifies it for us save it Use primary constructor. This is the primary constructor. You should always remove importers that you don't use. Let us see the views the customer, new customer. To see what is new in Razor template, you can just jump to your browser and type what is new in Razor views and then here you see again a link from Microsoft. Razor syntax reference for ASP.NET Core. Click on it. Rendering HTML, Razor syntax. You can use the add to reference an object or an attribute inside a model but if that attribute does not exist you will get error it says you can escape that using another art sign or art symbol a scalable vector graphics svg implicit razor expression explicit razor expression Among the conditionals, it is always interesting to check documentation about the new versions because besides the new changes, there comes a lot of new stuff that you can use. And being aware of those new things help you to write clean, readable and secure code. And the same way you can check the JavaScript inside.net, you can check the CSS inside.net. If you upgrade from a very old version of .NET to the latest version of .NET, the chance is very high that you get a lot of errors. The template layout in the new version of .NET is also very different than the old version of .NET. For the very older version of .NET, I personally suggest that you create a complete new project and then bring each component inside a specific folder. For example, bring all your controllers inside the controller folder, all your models inside the model folder, and all your views inside the view folder. And that way you can work this out. In the older version of .NET, you have a web setting, web dot settings and stuff. And now in the newer version, you have app settings.json. For what you have inside program.cs and app settings.json, in the older version you had just one file now it is two files now app settings.json is just for constants that you can specify some settings some values there and access those values in program.cs and do stuff and for the rest you can do inside program.cs and that is uh, i think uh, the most efficient and logical method to upgrade from the very older version of .NET to the newer or the latest version of .NET. You as an excellent developer should keep track of the new changes in technologies that you use in your development stack. You should check like every month what is new in JavaScript, what is new in CSS, what is new in HTML, what is new in .NET, what is new in c -Shot, what is new in Entity Framework and etc. It helps you to write clean and secure code. Some companies wait until the application stops working and then they upgrade. And then 
it will be a lot of work it is a lot of work when you want to upgrade from version 1 for example to version 10 waiting too long is not good it is not good for the performance of the application it is not good for the security of the application so it is best to keep track of the new versions and then go along with the new changes step by step staying in the range of long-term support is the best thing you can do for yourself because that way you don't have to worry about the performance you don't have to worry about the security and there are also not so many changes so the upgrade is very simple and easy as we have seen with upgrading this application from dotnet 6 to dotnet 8 i hope it was clear once again upgrading from one version to another version is not that difficult it is very easy as long as you will stay within the range of long-term support microsoft supporters dotnet seekers until november next year so there is still one year support for dotnet seekers but if you want to upgrade your application from very older version of dotnet to the newer version of dotnet it is best easy and fast to create a new project a new like a new template and then bring your coders inside the new template and then change accordingly that's it guys thank you so much for watching i hope it was helpful i hope it was clear your support means a lot it is very nice if you like the video and subscribe to the channel hopefully see you in the next video have great times